My Gavan and Melonine and well met indeed. I am Arach here, Gala Jonathan, the head of the mudding team behind Divide into Conquer, and welcome back to our grand Total War campaign of Loth Lorien. Now, I know what most of you are thinking is saying, hang on, Galu, Caliborn wasn't there last time. And you'd be right in thinking that. I also did not own the town of Rui last time. And this is, of course, because, rather foolishly, I released the um, Lothlorien campaign one week ago. And obviously, version 2.2, well, actually releases in 45 minutes from the point of me recording this. But by the time you watch this, it will have been live for about three days. So um, I wanted to actually make it so that this was based on version 2.2, because there were quite a few of the town changes, specifically Zag Kala, that came in after I started recording. So I've just quickly got us back up to 18. Now I've run through some of the minor differences this time. Number one, Rohan and Dol Guldor are not currently at war. Um, they've not gone to war, but Rohan did get a dry Khan, as you can see there. Dol Guldor did actually attack me, but it was a really insignificant minor army. I didn't want to start the recording just to show fighting that, but it does mean we're now at war with Dol Guldor. Misty Mountains have not attacked us. Um, they haven't sent anyone even in our direction. They are currently at war with Angmar and Imladris. Um, Dol Guldor are also at war with Anduin. Um, and then other than that, it's been fairly standard. Gondor are at war with Mordor and Dol Amroth. Dale and Erebor have gone to war. Um, and at the moment, that is it. So, not too much going on. Other differences, I got given just then, I got a mission to send a diplomat to the elves. So I sent him off and they gave me three archer units for it. Um, or two, I believe, actually. Two archer units. So we've got a huge army out of nowhere, thanks to that. Also, um, I this time, obviously, with the benefit of hindsight, I went straight for Rui. Um, Rui. And it's, an, it's a beastly moneymaker. It's got so many um, resources here that this little region is very wealthy. Um, so that has helped kickstart our economy greatly. And as you can see, our trade with Khazadum is flourishing. Um, in, in case you didn't know, I've never really covered it, I suppose. But it is a uh, the amount of trade carts on the roads are visual indicators of how much trade is passing between the two nations. So as you can see with Rohan, we have barely any trade. But with Khazadum, we are absolutely living up the trade at the moment. So that's all very good. Um, so nothing has really actually happened. I haven't fought any battles. Um, I took a Rui um, without... They just they just fell. They didn't sally. Oh, no, that, no, sorry, they did sally. They did sally. I don't know why, I don't know why I'm saying that. Um, they did sally. So I did fight there. <laughs> that was like 15 minutes ago and I've already forgotten about it. Uh, but I pulled my army back and they are currently retraining. Um, the minor army that came through from Dol Guldor, I think, was sent down here to take a dry Khan. Rohan beat them to it, so they pulled it north and they moved into Karas Galathon. It was ridiculously small, the army. Um, and they tried to take the town and I just I beat them. It was very straightforward. So those are the only differences. Otherwise, we are 18 turns in, the same point at last time. We just happen to have one town more and we're making money this time. So those are the only real differences. I am going to stick with the plan. I'm going to move up and take Zag Kala. My plan is to then hold Zag Kala whilst we then move across and take Dol Guldur. Um, because if we can take Dol Guldur and we can take Zag Kala, we cripple our two nearest enemies. Of course, the rules are all exactly the same. So this large army in here, Haldir currently has seven command stars. He can control 14 units, so he can take that army. That's not a problem. Um, which, when they finish retraining, is exactly what we're going to do. Um, we're retraining just because we've also... I managed to get um, a leather tanner. Or leather worker, sorry. The second tier of the blacksmith. You'll also be pleased to note that I'd fixed the bug that showed that that still gave... Um, cost reductions so that was nice <laughs> met the biggest reason really i will end the turn there the biggest reason i wanted to start this again on version 2.2 rather than continue on on the kind of midway between 2.1 and 2.2 is because zag Kala has been updated since i started recording the first episode and so this is a prime opportunity to show zag Kala's battle map so i hope you don't mind we're only 18 turns and the, as i say the only real difference now is we are at war with dol Guldor and rohan aren't so um that's a, a minor difference i suppose Oh, we get more military units if we send someone over to Dale as well. Yes, my lord. Also, about the Elven Alliance, yes. by the way, I am fairly certain only I could, that in order to decline the Elven Alliance, you have to first ally with them through the normal method, 
and then you have to reject the messenger that arrives after that. So you have to have a normal alliance with them, enable to be able to then decide, no, actually, we're going to go it alone. So if you just stay unallied to them, you will not get your elite unit. You have to, first of all, ally with the elves, because it's it's through that alliance you're able to use each other's finest units and to develop each other's skills. But if you reject, so if you just get a normal alliance and then reject the further alliance, then you just take the basic facts and skills that you've shared with each other and you get your best elite units. But if you go fully for the alliance, you get some of their actual units, which I'm sure many of you know that's how it works, but um, I'm just explaining that out. Hormorath is almost certainly going to come for us, but we have a very big advantage that we didn't used to have playing as Lothlorien now, and that is that we can defend on the bridge and nobody can get us. Loads of people keep moaning that having moved Keren Amroth out to Lim here is apparently nerfing Lothlorien drastically, but um, it isn't. No, <laughs> I don't know what you're all worried about. Ah, he can only control 10 units. Might need to get him involved then. Get on that bit. Anyway, we'll end the turn now. Let's see where Hormorath is going to go. Dogledor, um, this time, have had a real sort of almost hard-on for me, if you'll pardon the crude terminology. They sent a couple of minor armies and just came near to Karas Galathon, but then turned around and went to a Drykarn. And then obviously an army came back and actually attacked Karas Galathon. Um, and then since then, they've just been, they've been moving troops back and forth quite visibly for a while. And it's obviously all because Rohan has not gone to war with them. So they've, they're focusing on me and Anduin now. Sire. But they're going to have a hard time of that, because we can crush the buggers. So, Haldir and some units. Zach Keller doesn't look like it's got much. I think we should probably press for Dol Guldur and just end them quicker. Dol Guldur will also make money. Dol Guldur will cripple that faction and basically take them out of the game. And remember, we can't ally with anyone, so... Mordor and Rune have gone to war, yes! <laughs> but Merc would have allied with Mordor, bugger. That means if we attack them. I am going to go straight for Dol Guldur. We're going to go ham. So I'm going to take basically everything, I think. For the light. Haldir, obviously, we can't take. We can't have two generals in one army. Um, we we'll probably start losing money when this army comes outside of the city. In fact, we almost certainly will. We should probably look to build something. You can't actually recruit anything at the moment, can you? And your town halls don't give recruitment, do they? No. So you'd need a town guard, first of all. And then you'd need a town hall, a hall of song. Let's get the hall of song up first, and then we're, if it's, if it's possible, we'll get the barracks up. What did you get? Oh, you got a master builder. Ah, uh, well, if I, it's just I think we are going to lose money, so I'm tempted to try and build some money-making buildings now while we can. It's a shame that you can't queue things up and like bank the money, you know. So like, I've got the money at the minute, so like here you go. Here's a down payment to take the grain exchange. I do wish it were like that. Because I'm very tempted to get uh, the stables, but I'd rather the stables were in Callus Galathon, where we've got much more recruitment capacity. But by the time that building is finished, we'll be in debt. So, and we've got the Hall of Song coming up here. Lim here, I think it probably is going to be advisable for you to take something like communal farming. Let's just try and get money. And I am, as I say, going to take the lot. Callus Galathon is a very safe location. Alright, Hormorath. Are you going to attack me? Or are you afraid of what you might find at my base? <laughs> my lord. Name that Without game. Question, impossible. Alright, let's give it a go. Come on, Hormorath. Show us what you're made of. I apologise that we... That's partly why I want to take out Dol Guldur, because in almost all Lothlorien campaigns that a human plays as, that you play as, Dolgaldor are your main enemy. And I don't really want to show us fighting Dolgaldor. Um, so my aim here is just to try and beat them quickly. Get them out of the way. They've gone over to Lim here. And Captain Lucar has come over you. as well. But he won't be able to take down Haldir. Although there isn't a garrison in Karas Galathon until we build the garrison buildings. So. Come also, we're not losing money as much as I thought we might be. Take it for the elves. But you're going to get a battle. Oh yeah, I took the saves out to make sure the times turns went quickly. Captain Erudreith. Um, you're archers, aren't you? I, I will control you. What have you got then, Hormrath? Good God, you've got two generals with you. Shadowbows. This is the army that Dolgaldor essentially starts with. 
All right, if we can kill these then, this is going to be a real crippling blow. Fight to the end. And we've got a ton of archers in our army, so hopefully. Hormoreth, of course, is no longer mounted. Only the Witch King and Kamul are now mounted Nazgul. So Celeborn should be able to give him a run for his money. <coughs> oh, excuse me, sorry. Nice touch, we're actually fighting in the Golden Wood. Hence the tree flickering. But the entire map is forest, so... Ah, oh, no, I think this might be one of those occasions where it looks like you're in trees, but you're actually not. We have two melee units. Now, obviously, they hide anywhere, so they're hidden no matter what. But So, yeah, I think this map, whilst it looks like we are in a forest, we're actually not. The trees don't actually exist. So there also won't be a negative effect from shooting um, in this area. Oh, the lines. Spears and swords, small. Right, we need to use our archers at our... To a best of our possible potential here, and we've got the Engelite. This is about as maximum at the moment that Celeborn can command under the um, house rules. A recap of the house rules I can't ally with anyone, I can't have more than one general in an army, and generals can only command as many units as two times their number of command stars. So Celeborn at the moment has five command stars, which means he can command up to ten units. His bodyguard included. And we are currently at, what is this, nine units? This is ten units, but then this gentleman here isn't actually in his army. But, um... I am going to go with... the Basically the notion that... Whilst I can't have two... I can't have one army that is... So say a general can only... I have two generals, they each have five command stars. So they can only control ten units. That's half a banner army. I'm going to make it so that I can then combine those two banner armies into one battle. Because of course I am still affected by the fact the AI will control one of those armies. Or rather, the way that I'm going to hinder myself in that regard is that if I have two armies... Um, and the two armies combined would take it over the general's command stars, then the second army must be controlled by the AI. the wargs do? Why have the wargs just come to kill themselves? Remember, these are elven archers. I mean, they need a couple of volleys maximum to drop these kind of fools. Ah, some of them can shoot those. The shadow bows are definitely the main enemy here. The rest of their army appears to be moving off to challenge our archers who are shooting the wargs. We've run away. I don't really want just our archers versus their archers because we're going to waste so many arrows. Take their arrow fire for a while. Or oh, if they are going to separate their army out like this, they can just charge them. How many are actually left? 25. Oh, there's hardly any left. Yeah, let's send Celeborn out. The melee forces are now miles away, so they've left the archers out to die. So we'll just we'll just send Celeborn to charge them in melee. <laughs> well done, men. Well done. Neutered that wag charge there. You should be able to finish them in melee, surely. There's only 13 of them. Although they've taken some damage. Oh dear, he's arrived at his destination like and I've just left him. Smash the enemy. Nah, pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back.
If the wargs run away, what did they do? Yeah, there's only 11 of them. I'm trying to get these archers back to our line. Don't want to lose them needlessly. They can shoot at um, him all they want, but I don't think they have the damage to actually hurt Kelleborn, to be honest. Right, the melee troops are moving in. Another wave went off before they hit. Oh, but it only killed one. Bugger, I was just too slow. Dogledore host moving in there. Uruk bodyguard at the back. Very much in our favor. Victory will be ours. Castellans of Dogledore. I didn't realize they had those in their army. Get that 5100 bodyguard down, please. Units, move out. We bring swords from Lorien. We quit. Over here, we travel from Lorien. The wargs are moving up again. Weapons ready, Elves. Girth and Enstand ready. Castellans are getting hit, but I'm not sure they're going to be too many losses. Oh, we're shooting our own men in the back. Alright, you go out and hit those bodyguard. Oh, sorry, archers. There's only six wilds there. There's only six. The Girthinen have stepped up. They have the old glaive that everybody likes. Those Castellans are going to do very well. Some of their javelin troops have still kept back quite a large chunk of their army though. Still hitting us. What's that over there? Why aren't they moving in? Oh, hold on. The Castellans are Hormarath, aren't they? Yes, of course. Right. Are you actually still fighting anything? Lies dead. Without their general, they may ah. flee. Ah, oh, the wags hit you again. There's only five of the buggers. Run yourselves around there. Girth men have hit them. You're taking down that bodyguard still. Oh, there's 248 orc raiders over there. That really could do with being shot. Trees make this a real nightmare of a battle, don't they? Oh, someone just threw javelins at you. Oh, you're getting shot by the scouts. That's all right. All right. There's some castellans here. Kindly shoot them in the back. Over there, if you're going to move again, then. Bodyguards going down. Merkwood Stalker's moving in on our archers there. Only half the enemy force remains. Bring them. So 50 of those left. Oh, those raiders have been massacred. Oh, there's more bodyguard in the middle there. Oh, 
and a shadow guard at the back. Their army is just in complete disarray for no real reason. They're, there's absolutely no rhyme to their attack pattern here. They're just... It's just, it's just ridiculous. Who knows what they're doing? The heroic bodyguard fled. Moving on those. Who are you fighting? Oh, the bloody wags are still alive. They're getting shots off. I mean, we're going to win, obviously. But, um... We'll take a pounding. And those Castellans are doing very, very well. But if Hormrath can go down, that gives us 15 turns with n with no... Oh, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Get Celeborn over there. He'll do all right. Get those Shadow Guard. If we actually zoom in, where have we got troops? So the Castellans are over on the left. There's those armies there. And then there's just a few troops out the back here. One of which is the Uruk Bodyguard. Celeborn. Hit the Castellans. Get Hormrath down. Yeah, not so um, secure in your victory now, are you, you wraithly bastards? You guys have won, haven't you? Mass routing on that right hand side. We're faster than them. Let's be using that to our advantage. So it's just the Castellans left, I believe. Oh, both of the other enemy generals have fallen except Hormrath. There he is. Down he goes. Our men have slain the enemy general. Oh, there's Celeborn himself, leading the charge. Well done, sir. Is anything actually still fighting? Yes. One unit, standing near to you. No, the enemy will be awed by the victory we it's have won here today. 273, Girthenen. Oh, well done, men. Now, I know from the first episode, it's going to be about 50 people who are going to say, Oh, my God, you can't have battles like that. You're absolutely going to get annihilated if you have battles like that. But I would remind you that this is Total War, and arguably, Total War is actually easier than the normal game mode. <laughs> um, Kazadum are not going to attack me. Let's just put that out there. If they do, um, then, then I'll eat my words. Strong possibility they won't, though. So, not bothered about them in any way. Um, do you want to ransom that? Execute? Nah. <laughs> So we're not worried about khazad -dum. The Misty Mountains are already occupied with the same enemies they were last time. Anduin, Imladris and Angmar. The Elven lands. They haven't shown any interest in me this time. And there hasn't been any movement around Zagkala for now about five turns. So it's looking like it might be peaceful from them. Elven. Which just leaves Dol Guldur. Um, so once we take Dol Guldur, <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. We neuter that threat. In one foul swoop. By the light of Elbereth. Which we shall now go and do. Over here, elves. Stay oh no, our relations with the Shadow of Mokwood are poor. Whatever will we do? I think what I should do. Sire. Can I get you Yes, my lord? Come on! And put Only... Haldir in that one. Because Haldir doesn't get free upkeep. Elves. But he'll get free upkeep Fall if he goes in Karas Galathon. So that will save us a bit of money. But otherwise, I think we can do another end turn. We're going to get given some troops as soon as we rock up in Dale yes, as well. Yes, my lord. What is it you wish to discuss? You hold us at... Very well. You want map info for map info? This proposal... Very well. It was just a suggestion. And there we are. Two more archer right. units. Swiftly. Elves. End the turn. So we're going to be losing money. But if we can take and hold Dol Guldur... Oh, another advantage of taking and holding Dol Guldur. 
no, 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 sorry, no, no, that's um, Mordor only. I'm fairly certain that um, if you capture Baradur, the Nazgul don't respawn. However, if you capture Dolgaldor, they still do. We have to defeat the faction for the Nazgul to not spawn. So we have a 15 turn window now before Hormorath comes back. I don't think we're going to win uh, to beat Dolgaldor in that time, but we can certainly give it a damn good try. Ah, oh, Rui got its hold of song. What was the mission they just gave me? Dwarves of Erebor, I get 500 gold coins for going to them. Yeah, go on then. Yes, my lord. Yes. What can I do for you? That seems my farewell. There we are. That's nice and easy. Who else can we get trade rights from that's sort of in the area? Oh, we could head over to Imladris. I'd be interested in that. Well, what I do want to do really is ally with Without Mirkwood question, so that I can then deny them. Obviously, again. I'm not going to have any allies, but um, in order to get my best unit, I need to ally and then reject the alliance. Who's this? Love her. Oh, those are retraining. Oh, that's good. Not sure we'll be able to get a second unit of wardens in there. Let's, um... I'm gonna stick you. See, the Come temptation on, now actually is to use Haldir to do a lot of the mopping up, um, and Elf. send a unit up to where he was. So again, we're going to lose the money, but I think it's worth it. We're not really threatened in a, in Erui, so let's send it's those me. out there. Come on, follow me, Sire. Scatter them. We must have come, my brothers. And send Haldir back. So Haldir is going to act as he does in the real legendarium. He's going to run around our towns, defending us from things well, like Mirkwood's advances. First of all, we do need to just murder those. Now, this is where I just want to see how the auto resolve does favour the elves. I'm going to auto resolve. Oh, that's not bad at all, really, is it? He's defeated their wretched army. Elves, onward! Assail them! We protect the elven lands. Ah, oh, they've taken the lower veils. Come on, Rohan. Get involved. Should we have a little look around the world? <clears throat> yeah, go on. Rohan. Oh, they do border each other. They've taken all of the um, lands in between. I don't think Rohan is at war with anyone, though. Isengard don't think they can take them. Rohan don't really want to attack Gondor for some reason. Gondor might start that war themselves, by the looks of it. Bloodthirsty savages. Interesting effects in the south. The Ardenaim have taken An um, And Mordor and Rune, of course, are at war. But doesn't it like they're actually at war? It just looks like they might not like each other very much. Well, obviously, they are they are in a state of war. But um, neither of them are actually acting upon it. Dogledore expanding out vast, vast provinces. <laughs> Dale and Erebor, of course, are at war, so that's a, they've got a nice shared front between the two of them there. Oh, the Misty Mountains took on Azanar and they appear to have lost it. Or maybe they never took it in the first place, actually, I don't know. They have probably stretched themselves too thin, especially with war with Angmar. Imlad just attacked there. Nothing in Eriador happening, so there we are. Nothing really going on elsewhere. Follow me. We can give it another successful Sire. end turn, I believe. Maybe I should have gone for a garrison building in Karas Galathon first. And I'm probably going to just call it Karas rather than Karas Galathon every time now. Hope you don't mind. But we're going to plunge in for Dol Guldur. We're going to take Amun Lank back. I don't know, as Dol Guldur's only other enemies are the Anduin. There's no guarantee that anyone will come to our assistance in attacking them. But we've got a, quite a sizable army. And we do actually make an awful lot of money. And if we can kill... By the light of um, oh, what I'm are you doing? Stick you. This is a Zug Nash person. Celeborn is, is almost at his peak. By the light of oh, Gondor and Rohan have gone to like war. Idiots. Come. Have a taste of my blade. Scatter them. Idiots. Oh again, I don't need to I don't need to fight this. Haldir replenishes, doesn't he? Our lands will be I, I once no more. need to fight that. So Haldir is basically just gonna jump from bridge to bridge, holding back Dolkaldor's advances. Now we retrained our uh, elves there. We 
don't make very much. If we take Dolgal Door, though, we'll make a hell of a lot of money. We could sack it, I suppose. We could always take it, destroy everything, flee. It's always an option open to us. Can't believe Rohan and Gondor have gone to war. Rohan and Dolgaldor at war was excellent. It was absolutely brilliant. But Gondor is now at war with everyone around them. I mean, they're so bloodthirsty. <laughs> I think that comes because bigger nations are more confident at the start, so they take on the smaller nations. Then they get screwed over by things like the garrison script in towns, so they don't actually make any ground. Then the smaller nations get larger and larger until the one big nation is then vastly outmatched by the many smaller nations it's gone to war with. And so it then gets crushed. But obviously at this very moment in time, Gondor is strong enough to take on, statistically, Dole, Amroth, Rohan and Mordor. But they won't be soon, so it's... Elves. It's foolish. Engage. Is um, Kamul in here? It's yes, he is. Near. Are we going to win this? I hear you cry. No, we're almost certainly not. They're going to come and attack us, I expect. Look at the armies that they already get. The orcs are so, so easy to make troops. I really probably should not fight this. We should take somewhere like um, the two villages outside of it, sack them, destroy buildings, just constantly harass Dolgaldor and keep them away from our main centre while we try and build up. Which is what I think I probably will do. I'll pull that army out in the next turn. <laughs> Anduin trying to bribe my town off me. Of course, I'm not allied to them. I just have trade rights. Oh. Only one small reinforcing army has come. That's interesting then, because that is Dogledor trash. That is an army of Dogledor mid-tier, but still basically trash. Only Kamul is a threat. And fortunately, Lord Celeborn counters Kamul one for one. We can do it. I believe. Wipe the blight from this land. We can bloody do it. And then I will. I'm not going to try and hold Dolgaldor. I'm, I'm, I definitely won't be able to do that. We'll just lose. So we'll just destroy every building and we will bugger off. I won't cheese the game and sell it to someone else so that they can't use it. We'll just set the tax rate to high and flee. Right, we're being attacked from here. Kamul is coming in from the side over there. Um, oh, that's a nice hill. Oh, that's a very nice hill. Yep, we'll meet them here. Caliborn, you're going to be in the front row. Um, or you're going to just basically keep moving around. And Your one job here is to counter Kamul. We need to be more sort of angled that way, really. Because the main army that's coming through the middle is actually quite small and pathetic. I expect Kamal will try and flank, so I'll put you on the edges. The enemy are bringing in reinforcements. Bring it, you heathens! Lorian archers, ready for battle. Unleash furious hell. There he is. There's his bodyguard looking pretty cool. And he's just beelining for us. But we stand ready. The enemy will be in range any minute now. Celeborn's firing. The archer's on the hill. It begins. Down they go. Only half the enemy force remains. The battle is very much in our favour. Victory will be ours. Um, ceasefire, stop. Change direction. Ready, 
Which one's come up? how our cowardly foe runs. It's time to press the attack. Open fire. There's come out. We need to trap him. We need to trap him. He's going to hit them. Oh, well done. Perfect timing. Get Celeborn in the middle there. Charge him, Celeborn. You protect your lord. What an idiot. He just charged into a shield wall. The Girth and Ed are flanking round to stop anyone flanking in on Celeborn. Excellent. Our archers, do what you do best. The battle is very much in our favour. Victory will be ours. Shoot the units at the back there that are very much out of the way, please. Our men have slain the enemy general. No way. The enemy, but no oh! Oh! <laughs> Kamul is already dead. Is this Only half running? the enemy force remains. Oh, no, they charged the Girth and then. Oh, hey, you're out of arrows. Don't do nothing. No! Sacrificial lambs, I'm sorry. He can't take on the amount of numbers that we have, though, surely. The battle is very much in our favour. Victory will be ours. Capture as many as you can. Support our archers. Behold how our cowardly foe runs. Yes. It's time to press the attack. What did we do? 12 plays 87. Pretty good. Ah, oh, excellent. They've arrived in on them. Chase them down. Chase them down. I think that's as many as we're going to get, really. This is a clear yes! victory. Yes! Yes, Galaborn! Beautiful bastard. 261 kills, Lorian Archers. Well done, friends. Sperio e Engelith took 2-4-1 down. Yes! Kamul just completely lost his mind. He didn't flank, which is what I absolutely expected him to do. They always send cavalry around the edge. And he started charging, then he just stopped. Allowed my units to form a shield wall, which something like triples their mass or something stupid which that's why cavalry can't charge through a shield wall because the mass stats play against each other and so um if you wanted to make an absolutely beastly unit that can't be countered by uh, cavalry you can just give it a ridiculous mass stat and then its mass is so great it counters the mass of the mount and thus doesn't take that charge damage um and that's exactly how shield wall works it just stops cavalry having any real effect. Now, if Chieftain Hormrath was the heir and Kamul was the leader and they're a Teutonic faction, why aren't they dead? <laughs> no, I know they're not dead because they've got a general standing in the top right of the map that ensures they can't be killed by regicide. Lord Celeborn, liberator of Amun Lank. Braith Mudasen wants to join him. No, thank you. Can't afford you. Lim here got communal farming. We've got a ton of money. And Haldir is about to be massacred, I think. Haldir, don't stand on that Come bridge. You're going to die there. Retreat. Um, right, we're about to get some money. Because I am going to do as I said. And destroy everything. Should allow. Oh, it takes five turns to build, but let's just get it groundwork for it done anyway. Get a barracks there so that that can get free upkeep. You can't actually do out. How much money are we making? A thousand ish. What should we go for for you here? Um, you can get a guild house. Oh. Ooh. Uh, no, let's go cavalry. Let's do it. Even should have done it earlier when I was thinking about it, but. Cavalry will help us immensely against the trash of the orcs. 
Now we're not going to actually hold Dorgaloth for very long at all, but next we'll move down here. Over here elves. Take Akhnodior, which is still a village. Excellent, we can just sweep in and take that. Oh, I can't set the tax rate, can I? Of course. Right, so that's virtually useless to them. I mean, I could try and sell it to a nation. Can, yes, my lord. Ah, oh, and then we could get the Woodland Realm involved. Oh, I'm going to cheese it. Woodland Realm, are you at war with Dogledore? No, you're not. Right, brilliant. You're about you to be. Alliance, for... map info, map info. Um, I will give you the settlement of Dogledore. How much money have you got? You're poor. Um, give me a regular tribute. How about 500 for six turns? It's not very much, but... And maybe make a one-off payment as well of the thousand. Just to show your goodwill. King Thrandwill. Yes! I accept this one an honor and a Right, as I say, I've only way. made that alliance so that I can then break it so that I can get my elite units. I don't intend on staying allied to the Woodland Realm. Uh, and I did only give them Dogledor. Yes, it's a cheesy-ass tactic, but it's not that cheesy. They might actually be able to hold it, which is then just forethought. At least I didn't sell it to someone like Dunland, for example, which is the real way of cheesing it. That was my attempt to actually bring them into the into the war, get them off their asses. All right, let's see what's going to happen with Nag Thak. I don't know as that we'd be able to take him. Um, ah, but he's going to take two turns to get there, so we might. We'll, we should get a garrison first. If he takes Lim here, then we'll get a garrison and we can move off and kill him and get it back. So that's not a problem. I wonder if Dogledor will attack the Woodland Realm now, if they will make that choice. It's turn 45, I think, the Alliance script kicks in. And you can reject it immediately. You can reject it straight away and you will get the unit that you seek. Um, you don't have to follow the path at all. So we just have to wait for that message and then we can break that alliance. So I hope you'll understand why that I've done that. Um, I probably should have explained from the beginning that I wanted to get the... I wanted to do the standalone version of the Elven Alliance. But in order to do it, you have to ally with the Woodland Realm. Um, and it doesn't actually stop you getting any major units. You get all of your main core elite units... So taking, by not ever allying with the Woodland Realm and never getting, so the unit I'm talking of course is his unit, the Berio Iengalite. You only get them if you reject the alliance. But you do get your normal elite units if you just stand alone anyway. So it's only like that one unit that you lose if you'd never ally with the Woodland Realm. Because of course if you never ally with the Woodland Realm, you'll never know that you could have got that unit. It, the script never does anything, so... I don't really know what my point was there. I've, I've come to a, just a blank in my head. <laughs> I'm thinking of attacking Akhnodion anyway. I'm really surprised they've not gone for Dogledore. I'm really surprised they're not trying to take Dogledore back. Rohan is moving up here, which means I probably don't want Akhnodion, because if we can get Rohan involved against Dogledore, that would be brilliant. Um, i tell you what we might do then. We protect the Elven lands. Engage! Is we'll try and take Roskabel back. Oh, they got they got garrison forces. We'll try and take Roskabel back, and then we'll try and give that back to the Anduin, so that it keeps the Anduin involved, and we don't have to worry as much about our eastern border. Without question, tomorrow. Dogledore have troops in the forest. I don't understand this. Now nah, we're going to get our army there. That's good. It really, really doesn't like us, does it? Well, it's only just about... It's because of the culture unrest, yeah. We need more elven culture here. Or just we need to upgrade those and then we'll be alright. I'm pleased we're going to get an armoury up, though. Get a garrison troop in. Uh, and then we should have some elves coming from here. Which means the next, what we really want is a Hall of Song from here so we can recruit more than one unit at a time. Or oh, is it two already? Oh, it's two already, actually. So it's not the paramount, but... I think it's ideal. Right, we'll go one more turn just to see what the lay of the land is like and then I think that'll end episode two. I really enjoy playing as um, Elven Nations. I, I am one of those that does enjoy it. I don't particularly enjoy Linden because I think they are absolutely mega mind-numbingly, boringly easy um, and it's just no, there's just no fun. There is no fun to me for Linden. That's why they're the beginner faction. If you don't know how to play the game and you just want to learn the concepts, play as Linden, understand the core ideas and then you can play as someone else, is the pr premise, basically. Um, Imladris I don't particularly find fun because I just don't think there's enough in their roster, which is 
as it should be, really. They're already so OP. But I do like the larger rosters. I am one of those people that favours factions like um, the Northern Dunedain because you get that vast options when you expand out. Following factions are at war with each other. Cand and Harad. Brilliant. Isengard and Enidwyth and Enidwyth and Dunland. Uh, Isengard and Dunland allied again. How boring. Where are you? Isengard? No, you're not. Oh, interesting. Enidwyth will shortly be killed off then. They are chasing me down. They're afraid to attack me. And here we are. Roscobel. I shall be having that one back. Thank you very much. You can retrain. Armor upgrades. And Rui's going to be first, isn't it? It's only got three turns. So what do we want to build next here? Armory as well, potentially, actually. Oh, oh we haven't got a castle. That's annoying. None of these are castles. I think a Drykan is a castle, but it's just too far out of the way now. Hmm. That would have been a best recruitment bot. No, I think we should... I don't know. How much money will we actually have? We'll have about 3,000 when that becomes a, a, bill, a town. And we will have captured Roskabel by then. So I think we should... I think we'll go economy and try and hit a port. It's over there. You can't sail the Anduin like you can the other ones. Um, just because I don't think it's all that necessary, really. You can't, whatever happens, get past the Falls of Raoros. So you'll only ever get down to the Wold here. Um, and it's... It's just not all that necessary. You can just you can walk almost as quickly as you can sail up the Anduin. So I've never really been bothered. And it would be an absolutely monumental challenge to get it so that you can sail around all of the ports and line all the ports up. It was easier with the um, river running because it's a there's a there's not much happening over here. And also it, there it makes a big difference. Being able to sail all the way from say your capital of Rune to the capital of Dale is big. But being able to sail from Karas Galathon to say the Karok, which is a about where you'd normally dismount, I expect. It just doesn't really serve any purpose, does it? And as I say, you can't get past the Falls of Raoros anyway. Because um, you can't. And um, so you can't get down to the sea. So you'd never be able to do that. So We don't do it. By the light of Elbereth. Um, I am just going to go one final turn. I'm not going to attack Roscobel. But I am just going to go one more turn. And then I shall save it. So, there we go. Version 2.2. .2. I hope you're all enjoying it. It should have been released... Well, actually, now as I'm recording this, it should have been released about three minutes ago. Uh, but, um, of course, you're watching this on, what, Wednesday? Whereas it actually went live on Sunday, so um, a, a while ago. But... Um, also, do remember there won't be a second Arden Iron video following this video on Friday of this week. Um, it was Thursday last week because I messed up the calendar schedule. On Friday of this week will be a Soulstorm video, not an Arden Iron video. Um, something of a renaissance on the channel, if you will. Variety is back, more videos are back. Um, and I'm enjoying it. Ah, there's Dogledore stepping Come, up. Brothers. Right, well, we're going to be attacking Roskabel. Um so we'll pop him into siege for now and at the start of the next episode we'll fight that battle and sack the town which will give us enough money to then build the port in Erui I really was hoping that, that should we have a little toggle fog of war before we end I was really hoping that army of Eomer was actually going to attack Dogledor but it seems that they won't but Dogledor now have a green blight in the centre of their land which is always very nice. Rune and Mordor, how's your war going? Oh, Gelebrin has fallen to Rune. But... Oh, and Dolgaldor are out in the middle there, which I expect means Dolgaldor may also join in on the side of its ally against Rune. Who aren't doing anywhere near as well when they're not set to go to war with Dorwinian. Dale are actually doing quite well as well in their Erebor-Dale war, although I wonder if that they've kind of stalemated... Sometimes the AI does do that. It will go to war with the nation, as you've seen with Mordor and Rune here. They've been at war now for 28 turns, roughly, or 20 turns. They were the first ones to declare war, actually, on the 8th turn. Just now been 20 turns since their war began, and it doesn't look like any of them have done anything. Gelebrin may have been taken from the rebels, not from Mordor, so... No ground has been won or lost in the Rohan-Gondor war. 
Gondor holding at the river against Mordor. And Principality of Dolomath haven't lost anything either. Gondor actually, in a, in a total war campaign where you can potentially go to war with anyone and everyone, or be allied with anyone and everyone, Gondor actually do really well. Um, because in this example, for, of course, Mordor are now panicking because Rune are on their border and at war with them. And they're not allied to Cand, they're not allied to Harad, so those two could be potential enemies of them at any point. So Mordor have got basically surrounded by threats, and that totally neuters them. Gondor are surrounded by threats, but they're very powerful, and they have the mountains protecting them. And obviously, Mordor has the mountains protecting them from the west, but from Cant, Arad, and Rune, there are there is no protection. So Mordor are never really that good in total war, I don't think, unless they get lucky. But normally they're not too they're not amazing. Eridun haven't done anything; they've just sat in their halls. Angmar have made it all the way to them, though. Linden haven't done anything. No surprises there, though. Um, Bree also, interestingly, have just sat and done sod all. They've got an army in Bree. Oh, of course, when they're not allied to the Northern Dunedain, they are then surrounded by an enemy. <laughs> and then they're not doing well with that rebel army there either, are they? Anyway, it'll all start kicking off more and more as we delve in. But at the moment, we are, of course, concerned with Dol Guldur. I'm not concerned that I may never get Dol Guldur back. That doesn't bother me because, of course, I don't plan to actually ally with the Woodland Realm. And in fact, I plan on defeating the Woodland Realm. So if we are to take it back from our own allies, our own kin, then so be it. I'm also quite tempted looking at the Toggle Fog of War there, seeing how tied up Misty Mountains and the Anduin are. I think swooping in and taking Zag Kala would go a long way to ensuring safety on that northern side. But for now, that will be all. So thank you very much for watching, if indeed you have. And until we speak again, dear friends, Navar Naden Perimad Melunin, and farewell.